Hey guys, Brian here from Better Chess Training. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a game I played recently, a fairly short game, but what I wanted to share, uh, this is from my stream from this weekend, is the uh, thought process and calculations I made during the game and how I uh, looked at the position, especially when my opponent deviated from opening theory. So uh, check that out and enjoy. Okay, uh, playing a classical game here on Lee Chess. And uh, we've already played the first few moves here, uh, playing a Moscow variation. And here my opponent is going for this uh, line with, uh, well, let's just go back here. Uh, after bishop to b5 check, I played the bishop to d7 variation. And now uh, white is looking to create this broad pawn center. So... Normally, uh, well, I, in this variation, black just goes about developing and getting his king out of the center. Um, There's some lines, and I forget which are which, uh, where white will opt to, um, after d4, opt not to take right away, but... Uh, I need to review those again. So we are, uh, this is a classical game. It is rated. So if you are listening and uh, watching, I would encourage you not to give move suggestions. Um, I'm going to try to, I mean, the whole idea here is to share my thoughts and thought process as we're going on here. And so there'll be a little less interaction than if I were, say, analyzing or something like that. I plan on going till about 8.30, so I'm not sure if that will encompass the whole game. But if we're close, I'll stay on. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy. <clears throat> Time control here is 30 minutes with 20 second increment. So uh, kind of a medium sized, uh, medium length game. I've been playing more of these due to time constraints. <clears throat> I love playing the 9030s with my uh, chess dojo friends, but I am often uh, often pressed for time, so I don't often have four hours, but I do usually have an hour and a half or so, especially in the morning. So it's Saturday morning here in Buffalo. But we're waiting for my opponent's move. <clears throat> I'm expecting d4. Then I have to decide whether I take on d4 or castle. The reason why is if he plays d4, then I castle, he can choose to um, play e5, and then it, you know, we can uh, fight for the center in that variation as well. Or, I'm sorry, play e5. So let me do this. I'm going to just go on the social media and just do a quick shout out that when I'm... Uh, Okay, uh, e5 right away. This, um, I'm not quite sure about this. 
not sure how good of a move this is. So, well, the point here is if I take, he gets in with the knight. I take and he takes with the rook. And here, I think he might be, I might be able to get him into a little trouble just because... Well, I need to do something either. I need to either take or play um, something like knight to d5. So let's analyze if we capture. d takes e5. Knight takes e5. Now I can take or say castle. Let's look at taking first because it's more forcing. Knight takes e5. Rook takes e5. So he's got a rook on e5. I can then castle. And then I think my position's fine. Uh, if he plays... Well, from there, if I castle and he plays d4, then I can just take. And then he's got an isolated pawn. But I don't think... I mean, this knight on f3, uh, we trade that with my knight on d7. I think it's a better for black um so already this variation is pretty good now do i get anything more out of playing something like knight to d5 and i'm not sure let's say he plays well if he plays e takes d6 i've got bishop takes d6 which seems okay and then maybe i could play knight d to f6 but if I play knight to d5, he can play c4. And now, well, then I've got knight to b4, I suppose. So let's take a look at that line. So um, knight to d5. The nice thing about it is knight's not on c6 yet. Um, and the nice thing, too, is that this does not help his development. Okay, because my bishop's covering g5, so there's no real attacks on the king right away. Knight to d5, c4, and then I just play knight to b4. Now I'm threatening knight to d3. But let's say he plays d3 next. Then I think I've got something like... Um, well problem I see is that he can hold off on this capture on e5. Yeah, I think, let's see. I'm leaning towards knight to d5 because c4, I feel, is weakening. And I'm not afraid of so if he has, we have some type of formation where there's going to be knight, um, pawns on c4 and d3 and um, c4. And then I have this half open d file. I feel that that's going to be good for, good for me. So. Okay, so that's one line. The other line would be um, knight to d5, d4. But then c takes d4, c takes d4 is, again, I think good for me. It, and because it's hard for him to challenge now because he has, you know, his knights, he's underdeveloped. I guess this e5 is premature. And I think I might be letting him off the hook. I'm just trying to see. I don't see a real way to punish the first line, meaning uh, d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5. If there are a way to punish that, um, then maybe I would look to do that more. So knight to d5 seems pretty good because taking on d6 just helps my development and I don't see any 
real way to attack on there. Let's just look at the line one more time. Knight to d5. d4, I think, would be the most challenging of those lines. And then... Um, C takes d4, C takes d4, and then I think, well, he doesn't need to, the only problem with that is that even though my knight's on d5, this, well, I guess we always have this tension. I can always put pressure on e5. Yeah, I can always do that later. I can always put pressure on it later. So that might be... So knight to d5 is kind of what I'm looking at here. And then c4, the only other uh, kind of um, forceful move, I can meet a few ways, including knight to b4. And if he plays a3, I just drop it back to c6. Or to d3. And so that would be good too. So let's go knight to d5. See, he might be thinking that he's going into sort of... Um, French structure with d4 and e5, but the difference, I think, is that I have the ability to put pressure on e5 that I don't have in the lines with, that I don't necessarily have in the lines with, um, in the French where d5 is already played because my pawn is still on d6, and so I can build up with my queen on c7 or b8, for example, and I think it'll be a little harder for, um, well, you know, white will be able to defend it, but I, I just think it's having that ability to do that will be advantageous for me. Yes. Okay. So Okay, so spent a little bit of time on that decision, but I think I think it's um, it was an important one, and we'll see later if I was right. But I think I think it's okay. I think the other way would have been okay too. It's too early to just kind of odd. Maybe I should have taken on e five also because oh well. <laughs> I one reason to take on e five is that now white would not be able to establish a pawn on e5. But uh, I, I, I like my decision as well. Uh, part of the idea is, uh, and I could just take that automatically, part of the idea is just what you're seeing here, is that my pieces are getting developed very nicely while my opponents um, are not. You know, my opponent's taking some time here with these pawn moves, that don't really help his position. See, now he doesn't have much central control. And um, here I think, you know, if he goes with d4 now, well, I mean, it's not bad. If he goes with d4, I take, he can either go to isolated pawn to get a little bit more central control and maybe try to get his knight to e5. Or he could take with knight to e5. And then we do have sort of a, a Tarash French type structure where uh, I have the uh, king side majority and he has a queen side majority. But 
in that case, my again, I think my, my pieces are just much better developed. And uh, I'm in good shape here. Now, c4 here, attacking my knight, I think would just be uh, just be a mistake. I could decide between knight to b4 or or um, just drop back to f6. Okay, so he's going to play d3. So that is interesting. Now he might be looking at a move like bishop to g5, which I could play a move like h6 to prevent it. Uh, or I can continue on with uh, my own plans, which I, I guess I need to, to decide on. So, <clears throat> let's see here. I could just castle, but then my king is looking a little bare over here. Knight to g5 might come, but then I think I can just play h6. And I don't really see any effective sacrifices on e6, for example. Um, well, I could just play h6 first, just to prevent him from even getting there. But is it worth, or, or I guess the, you know, is it more advantageous to kind of let him waste his time with that? And just, I could just castle. Castle, I just want to make sure there's no, uh, then let's say bishop to g5, and then I actually have queen to b6, something like that might be effective. I'm not worried about that. The knight to g5 followed by queen to h4 is more what I'd be, I guess, worried about. So castle, knight to g5, h6, and then um, let's just look at knight takes e6, f takes e6, and it's actually looking quite good for me, so I'm not really um, super worried about that. Okay, let's go ahead and castle. So knight to g5 is kind of, would be kind of a waste. Okay. Knight b to d2 maybe looking at knight to e4 that's interesting um, playing something like f5 to prevent that not really such a good idea uh, I could play knight to f6 here but again that uh, knight to f6 e knight to e4 Four. I think I can even just leave. I don't have to necessarily do it. Well, I could play something like bishop to e7. Or drop the bishop back. That would be one other other way here. Um, what else do I need to do in terms of development? The only thing is I, I don't really have a, a solid... Well, I do have a target in potentially in d3. But that's going to take a little time to develop... So knight to f6 still makes makes some sense here. Also because he doesn't have time to pin it because the bishop is covered right now or his bishop is obstructed by his own knight. And then I can decide whether or not I want to take on e4. Probably not because taking on e4 would allow him d takes e4 which would improve his position. So I probably would just leave it there. Uh, instead maybe move back my bishop. Okay, let's just... Uh, well... So if I do this, just as a clarification, if I do this and he plays knight to e4, I'd have to play bishop to e7 because he's also attacking the c5 pawn. So maybe maybe I want to do something different, like b6. Very interesting. Okay, well, let's, let's just go with that. I think um, bishop to e7 is fine at the idea that maybe later in the game we'll be attacking on the queen side sort of a uh, pseudo-minority attack. Actually, that idea might not be bad at all. Uh, b5, b4, and then um, if it forces c4, now I've got the d5 square, or the d4 square. 
Okay, Queen to e2 looks not so great because of knight to e4. Actually, that could be a fairly large blunder. Um, knight to f4 hits that queen again. The queen could drop back, but if he wants to stay in contact with the d3 pawn, this actually could be a uh, way to win some material here. Knight to f4, queen to e3, and the knight takes d3. He can't take it because I have a discovery. But I could be winning a pawn here. I think I am. I think I am. Let's see here. Um, yeah. If my calculation is right. It's kind of an easy calculation, so. Let's see. Let's see. Now, my opponent is rated about 130 points below me, so. But I, it, the key is not to underestimate anyone. Uh, I recently lost about 100, <laughs> 150 points. Okay, so here's this um, queen to e3. And now, I believe, I win the d3 pawn. And then I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm just, well, let's look at this. Knight takes d3. He takes it with the queen. I played bishop takes h2 check. And then I win the queen. Now, if he ignores it and plays something like rook to d1, which is, which would probably be the better move, I can do a couple things. I can actually uh, just take on c1. Or maybe I could play something nifty like um, something nifty like bishop to f4. And then where would he go from there? He'd go to um, e2, maybe. And then I can take on e2 or take on c1. The rook takes back, or one of the rooks takes back. And then, uh, let's see. Then I could bring my other knight to d5. So that would be interesting. All right, well, let's go ahead and win the pawn first. And we always have a little bailout with knight rook takes d1, which kind of gets us out of trouble. Um, or, enough, sorry, knight takes d1, or c1. <laughs> Getting all a little mixed up here. So, hey, right. winning a pawn, though, isn't winning the game. Still a lot of game left here. We do need to be a little careful. Okay, rook to d1, kind of what we were expecting. So knight takes c1 is a nice, easy move. But um, do we need to, you know, I don't know if we need to necessarily do that right away. Let's look at bishop to f4. Kind of forces, because all the... Uh, E4 is covered, E5 is covered, probably forces, uh, and E1 is covered, probably forces knight, or sorry, queen to E2. But do I have a follow-up that's really worthwhile? That's the question. I don't know that I do. So, um, not sure if that's the best move. Now, I could also look at something like knight to G4. Kind of harass this queen. Um, knight to g4, and again, I'm not sure if it's really worth it. I'm not sure if it's really worth it here. So I could do something else like um, well, actually, let's see. Bishop to f4, queen to e2, knight takes c1. Let's say rook a takes c1, and then uh, queen to c7, and then bring my rooks over. So that would be maybe a positive possibility. Or even after bishop takes, um, over there, bishop to f4, queen to e2. Yeah, I'm not sure here. Hmm. 
one thought is just to bring the knight back. Knight to f4. And then play queen to g4. Or, I'm sorry, knight to g4. With just this idea of harassment. Well, another idea, another idea is knight to g4, hitting that queen again, and now, and now, if he goes queen to e2, so knight to g4, he can go to e2, um, or e4. Now, if he goes to e4, I can actually take one of my knights, uh, probably the g knight, and take on f2. So f2 is kind of hanging too, so... You know what? We can win more material. Okay, knight to g4, queen to e2, and then knight, probably the g knight, because you could play h3. Knight g takes f2, and then I'm hitting that rook again. And then, um, this position's already falling apart. I'm up two pawns at that point, and I still have time still have time to get my knight back out. I think that would be the key, is getting the knight back out. Because he has to move his rook, let's say he moves it to e1, um, f1. Then I just play um, knight to g4 again. And again, this knight is immune because of... Um, this knight can't be taken because of the discovery. So let's let's hit him here. Hopefully my calculations are correct. We do have to be careful. As soon as he moves this knight, the d2 knight, or he moves his king, I no longer have that discovery. So I need to be careful. But overall, I think I think we're in good shape. Okay. Um, hmm. Queen to so he, queen to g five attacking my queen. Now a couple of things I can do here. I can just ignore it and just take on f two attacking his rook, and he takes my queen. I just take with one of my rooks. Um, there's no checkmating threats. If I take his queen, he takes back with the knight, and then I can still take there. Um, I don't really see a downside to that. Um, You have to do something because he's threatening my knight. Knight takes f2. Kind of forces the action a little bit. Um, bishop takes h2 check. Does that do anything? I think not necessarily. Uh, well, what it does do, it could trap the rook. Bishop takes... So bishop takes h2 check. If the king goes to h1, then I get this fork. If the king goes to f1, then I can just take on f2 and trap the rook. Uh, again, there's no checkmate threats. And if he takes with the knight, then his queen is in. So actually, bishop takes h2 looks really devastating. That looks very good. Okay, let's do that. Now, the only thing I have to watch out for, all right, I think I take the queen first, and then I trap the rook. So take the queen. The reason why, okay, so I have to be a little careful here. The reason why is this bishop would be hanging otherwise. Actually, now I'm a little questioning my, I might need to bail out here. So if I take, take, and then bring my bishop back. I don't know if I can go in for that. Queen takes g5. Knight takes g5. 
And then, um, well, maybe I'm okay. Knight takes f2. He can't play g3 to trap me anymore because the knight is gone. So I think I take on g5 first. And then I can decide whether I need to bail out or not. Okay. So here, I take on f2, and this rook, I believe, is trapped. Because, and, and he cannot trap my, now he cannot trap my, um, my bishop. So let's take here first. Now, I think he does get, let's see, so I take. So he takes back with the king, I, I can get out, my knight gets out with check. And so now I'm up, I believe, quite a bit of material. Okay, he takes that one. And that's okay. So I'm going to attack this. Oh, wait, let's double check here. So I didn't calculate this quite far enough. Um, okay, I'm going to hit him with this check. All right, this works, I think. Hit him with this check. If his king approaches me... Okay, he resigned. So, so that was a good game. And...